Ableton's iOS app called Note was released about a year ago, and while it had a great user experience and design, it was lacking some really essential features for sampling and making beats. But since release, the app has been constantly improved. A couple of months ago, they added MIDI support, so you can play instruments with a MIDI controller, which is a really, really vital update. And now they've added the features that sample based producers really needed, the ability to chop samples, albeit in a very manual fashion, and also to import videos from the Photos app on your iPhone and iPad, so you can screen record, let's say, a YouTube video and sample it. Pretty neat. These are the features that we will be going through in this video, but they've added a lot more like search function for presets, new presets based on the drift synth, an easier way to import samples in the app, and more. I will link to their blog in the video description down below so you can check out all the features. And now let's see how it all works. All right, so MIDI controller support, really easy to enable. Hit three dots down here, go to MIDI input, and I've got a Minilab 3 by Arturia connected via a lightning to USB adapter because I've got an older iPad, but you can also use a Bluetooth controller. It will appear in this list here if it is paired to your device. So whether it's wired or wireless, it all works pretty much the same. Just enable your controller and you're good to go. You can play drum racks or instruments or whatever. So let's get to sampling now. I've got some drum beats going, so I wanna add a sample from a video that I've recorded from YouTube. Hit the plus sign to create a new track. I just need to go back to my core library and switch to an empty drum rack. Hit done. And now I'm in the sample tab. I hit load. If I go to my user library, import it, I should see my sample. Now I don't see it now because first to import a video, you will first need to go to your photos app. Here's my video. I'm gonna hit the share button and send it to Note. Now I go back to Note. So yeah, now I've got this new sample down here. So I just hit it and it's imported right away. It's a bit quiet though, so I can just increase the gain just by dragging on the waveform. And also some other sample properties that I would love, that I would love to set would be the gate and the choke sample so that the samples choke each other and they don't overlap when I chop them. So now that I'm in the sample options tab, I can see now that I've got a copy and paste feature. So this is how you chop samples on Ableton Note. You copy and paste and change the starting point. It's a bit of a manual old school way. We don't have like any proper way to chop like we got on Simpler in on Ableton Live on the desktop. Hopefully they will implement this as well, but this is pretty usable, so let's chop this. One thing that we need to note is that the way you set the starting point here is that is just by zooming in and the portion that's visible on the screen, this is basically what is going to be played. So there is no separate start and end point parameters. This is just what you see on the screen. Let's see how we can do this. All right, so copy, hit patch two, paste, and it's also pasted with the choke sample setting. Now go back to my sample and set a different starting point. So you do it as many times as you need to get all your chops properly set. So you may have noticed that even though I set the mode to gate, it still plays the sample all the way through. So I need to go to this first step and decrease the gate amount so that the sample plays only as long as I hold the pad. Actually, I probably should have set the decay beforehand for the first chop. So now that I've copied all these samples that I need to actually set the decay for each one separately. So I guess you need to prepare your settings from the first chop so that you make sure that when you copy it retains all the settings for all your other chops.
So yeah, overall this app is getting better and better. Chopping is a bit too clunky still, but pretty usable and especially as a sketch pad on your iPhone when you're on the go, pretty cool. Hook it up to a super small Bluetooth controller. I think you've got an amazing, really, really portable rig with projects that you can transfer directly to Ableton using the Ableton Cloud and retain all your devices and media information unlike some other apps that are not made by Ableton. So pretty good overall. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out my sample packs and my Ableton Live packs from the link down in the video description. It's a great way to support the channel and get some great sounds and effects. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Catch you later.